Hello guys, welcome to this podcast Everyday Talkies, which ironically does not come out daily. I am Anshul and I talk about random things to random people, majorly about life, perspectives and thinking process. It's like an interview or let's say more of a conversation with one or two guests about random topics that interest us. To be really honest, it's just a way to reduce my inhibitions in talking to people. So, come join me and enjoy. Hello guys, welcome to the new episode of Everyday Talkies. Today we are here on the occasion of 15th August as Indian Independence Day. I don't know what are we going to discuss. I'm pretty sure you'll get most of your information through Doordarshan and other news channels, but I have with me Pushkar and Chandan as guests and we'll discuss something about Indian independence or something related to that and try to educate people somewhere or give our opinion. So your patriotism is overflowing dude like calm down calm down. See basically I don't have much idea. That's why I have you people upcoming budding lawyers as guests so that you can educate me and everybody else about this. So Pushkar why don't you go first? You are experienced so you know introduce chandan to us and talk to us about what 74th day for independence so pushkar over to you chandan is my classmate we're both law students and i don't know we're both kind of interested we've always been interested in history especially like chandan has been more interested in indian history than me he's very well read obviously so he has a very good idea of how our history especially during the colonial era happened so some clarifications i think are needed not a very well read person yeah so it's a really weird time i think to be even be celebrating independence day when not even allowed to go outside properly that's the irony yeah so i think 2020 is a uh, thing abdul kalam if he was alive uh, i think he would have taken it uh, very dearly he had a lot of dreams for 20 actually you bought up abdul kalam's vision for 2020 so you know why don't you talk about that he envisioned India to be a bigger power than it is now. He intended a technological revolution, which we can think fairly that is some you know, technological revolution. The few things that I remember from that book, majorly I remember some of his visions on education, which basically strikes me right now because I just heard about the new education bill that passed and his views on education and uh, his views on technology enhanced education and all of that. And given that all of us are in lockdown, you know, studying via e-mediums and all of that. Somewhere or the other, we are there in that aspect. Because 2020 has turned out in such a way that we have had to, you know, develop. So it's kind of like um, evolution through struggle, you know, or like revolution through struggle, like how our ancestors did during the colonial era. The aspect where situations like these, even in emergencies, wars, or where communal struggles like these probably make or break us in certain ways because I was reading this, one of these articles from Yuval Noah Harari on where he mentioned this one true fact that how this time is used by the government to fast track some laws which we may or may not have agreed before. We celebrate independence from the British, right? And it's like we became an independent democratic nation. But if you look at Britain, Britain was saying ki, like they were already a democratic nation even though they had colonies, you know. During the end, they were like, um, you know, we can make your dominion. Like I think Australia is a dominion of the uh, British Empire. We fought for was to have our own independence to become a democratic nation. We've started a lot of Indian uh, legal history which basically is half of it is British uh, legal history because that's where most of our laws come from. Even though Britain was like a nation of laws and you know they had the Magna Carta of the human rights, they had human rights and these rights and this and that Uh, even with all those laws, Indians were still treated as subhuman or subpar or you know inferior to Britishers or just generally you know white people. You know when we say Indian independence and since you guys have read so much of history what is the one thing that strikes your mind immediately when you hear about Indian independence? Something which you think that really contributed to this change? Given that we are still a very young country, people don't realize that. Chandan, why don't we go with you? So let me clarify. We might be a young country, we're an old nation. No, I think Chandan, what I would say is like we're a young nation, but we're an old culture. Because I think like before you know the British uh, colonized us, there was no like general idea of what India was, right? The whole nationalist idea came only when the whole independence struggle started. We were declaring ourselves independent from the British. So who were we? Like that was 
when the national identity came like that's just like i mean it's a basically terminology thing but one thing what i would like to say is like despite us being politically independent before the britishers came like we had a uh, hundred other kingdoms you know ruling our nation why i stress the on the fact that we were a nation is because though we at a subconscious level we knew that we were a single nation when you had these you know invaders coming uh, you know invading our land they would tell that we are invading hind right? even today when you uh, go to china many people actually refer to india as hind the same goes with iran right same goes with the middle east countries so we are collectively called as hind people from hind i think it is fair to say that subconscious level we all knew we were a nation so when it comes to indian independence see the most painful episode in in our history according to me the partition but when you speak of independent struggle i can't really you know tell one in, or i can't really identify the prominence of the whole independent struggle with one individual for example i can't say gandhi ji or i can't say bhagat singh or i can't say any other person for that matter so i feel like you know that this is phrase you can clap only with two hands so there are a lot of events added up and went into making independence a dream come true for example like there was this movie that in telugu that came out movie name was saira narsimhred and he was a person you know who did events similar to mangal pandey he did an uprising sort of a thing in southern india mainly in andhra pradesh but then i hadn't heard of this individual at all there are many other individuals like that whom i think they need to be you know known i think it's unfair to you know on my part at least to to pin india's independence on one particular person or one particular incident that this was a turning point that was a turning point i i don't really view in that but you ask me what would be the, the biggest turning point is how india reposed its faith in a man who returned from a foreign land which is gandhi out of nowhere he he came on the indian horizon and, and earned the trust of so many people so that i think that's a miraculous thing when you talk about indian independence Yeah, I think Chandan brings up a great point. Ki, like we have obviously these heroes of the Indian independence that we commemorated so much, but it's also important to realize that it was such a massive effort that it wouldn't have been possible without uh, you know the the kind of backing that ordinary uh, men and women who joined the freedom struggle had. They weren't like intellectuals. They weren't. They were sometimes they weren't even educated, but they believed in this idea that you know we deserve. these rights we deserve to be our own nation and they fought for it and so many of these people fought in like the smallest ways they lived like uh, unrecognized hidden lives like so many names that we don't know of that and uh, that haven't gone gone down in history they all you know in their small parts contributed to something so massive if you look at us as a nation like how chandan you know you defined us as a nation that this collection of people that uh, were subconsciously bound in identity i think if you go back in history if you go further back than the british so the british came they colonized us but before that we had the moguls and before the moguls we had all these little kingdoms with the you know with rajputs and chandraguptas and these and that so what i realized was for the last i think more than 500 600 years most of the population of india what they've done is they've just been exchanging one you know ruler for another first you had these small kingdom rulers then you exchanged them for moguls then you exchanged them for the british and largely most of those stories are like stories of how kings fought wars and they defeated this and defeated that and there's very little known about the common folk who lived in those times but it was really during the colonization that you started to see literature that reflected the lives of common people so people like uh, mulkraj anand people like bankim chandra chatopadhyay you know all these writers who were alive at the time people like uh, tagore obviously rabindranath tagore these were all educated people they you know they were most of them were lawyers they studied you know in oxford and their upbringing was very different they were of a very privileged class so when it came to their literature they could have written easily about life during colonial india how they existed alongside british people but most of their stories were about common indians who lived in rural areas who lived with the daily struggles of what it was like to live under subjugated rule of the british and in a way these novels these words they started to articulate the struggle that 
that we as a people have had been living through for the past so many years under so the novels were less about like just british subjugation they didn't even have to be about british subjugation they were just about subjugation in general because of the articulation because of the writing down of that whole idea it helped it get to you know remote parts of india it, it helped spread the word about how terrible it was to live in such a rule and it kind of generated this idea that we needed a revolution i mean i don't know if that makes sense but that's kind of what my realization was my personal favorite is probably like mulkaraj anand who wrote novels like the untouchable and the village and across the black waters which are all about these common folk the untouchable is obviously about a boy he's an untouchable and his daily life and so all the unjust things that he has to go through in his daily life then you have the village which is about people in a village having to come together to uh, resist you know british oppression daily oppression then you have across the black waters which i found really interesting because it's the only novel i could find which talks about indian soldiers who fought in world war 1 for the british and that was a very strange thing because the world war 1 if you think about it was the british fighting the germans the germans were fighting for uh, imperial rule and the british said that they were fighting for democracy while at the same time they were using indian troops who they had imperialized as their army against the germans things like these you know these little things that that we know very little of that were written down that came to light that helped uh, realize this idea of what the indian people were going through what the common were going through and because of that i think it helped a lot in the struggle for uh, independence uh, one thing which i think we touched upon i think overall was that how during the special days like independence day republic day or whenever we talk about uh, indian patriotism or any of that we always celebrate these one figure heads but you know we should really appreciate the common men how their lives were and how they even in whatever small way they took part in the indian freedom struggle so that's obviously a nice point yeah the one question which i wanted to ask again both of you was that we have been celebrating independence day like what we are around 2021 years old and we have been learning about history howsoever small or less from a very early days till now and you are now reading it more i would say in detail probably in your studies or just out of interest so what is the one change in i would say ideology if you have had any from your formative years to right now like is this something which has changed considerably or is it something which you used to believe before which you have found out to be a completely true regarding your indian independence i think the biggest change for me has been that growing up there was this i don't know if it was for you guys but there was this counter idea going on that maybe you know the whole colonization thing was actually good because that's how we got most of our laws that's how we got our uh, you know rail network did so much for our country and how we were developed and this and that and i really we bought into that idea for a while ki there was like some you know good influences because of the whole colonization thing over us you could make the argument that there, there definitely have been some good influences but also that this whole colonization thing was just a you know terrible horrible absolutely shitty thing to do like these days the more i read about the whole time period of colonization the whole what it was how big it was how the people were under it first of all it just makes me so angry that this kind of stuff went on as long as it did and then the more i read about it the more i find out ki there is so much atrocity and so many bad things that over the years people have just swept under the rug or people just have completely forgotten or they just don't want to act knowledge like on both sides not just the british but even us because it's not just the whole thing ki like the british came here and they colonized us and oh they are bad and we were you know just victims because if you look at it they wouldn't have been able to colonize us without indians also you know supporting them in some way uh, being subservient being actively on their side and it's such a shitty thing to you know uh, realize it was so easy for us to you know turn on each other for so long and you had you know these kingdoms who were basically the puppets of the british empire because they wanted favor with the british so you know they basically sold out all their people just for these material things so yeah the more i read about the whole era of colonization the more i grow to hate a lot of it i i don't think any word in english would do justice to you know the conditions in which we were in under them it's important to highlight the, the the similarity between then and now i think it's unity among people i don't think that there it was there then it was not there now so that's the similarity that i can say like you know if you take uh, the whole aspect of how pictures the first place where they actually established the direct military you know direct rule was in bengal so bengal was you know back then it was ruled by uh, the nawab siraj ud daula around 17 uh, 
hundreds his most trusted lieutenant mir kasim or mir jafar i something mir so this person actually betrayed sirajud daula against the britishers which was a very easy war for you know sirajud daula to win because britishers had to get the soldiers all the way from madras for in return for him being the bomb of bengal so a lot of instances like that have happened and later we can see there was this a battle of boxer which happened to plasi was in 57 when was when uh, mir kasim betrayed sirajud daula and you no know, got favors in return from the british Right, he just wanted to throw on. And in 17, well, a similar thing happened to Mir Qasim himself. So there was this other person who came, and in the battle of Bakhtar, he was killed. And uh, you know, uh, he was made a puppet, and you no, know, he didn't have any authority. He was. So this was, you know, how it played out eventually, not just in Bengal, but in every, you know, literally every part of the country. And then the fact that India was so important to the Britishers can be seen in the whole Middle East debacle, is what I can, you know, comment here because. just because they wanted you know a faster access to india they they had the whole issue with suez canal right there was a lot of havoc in the middle the whole reason why the british were rooted in you know middle east to ensure a, you know a quicker passage you know to india it's a really bad bargain you know say that probably we got english from them we got laws from them. it's a natural thing we were going to evolve it's not like we were we were never going to evolve right so you know laws would eventually come we would eventually get the language if we wanted to that would have been an organic you know evolution rather than a forced evolution it's an organic evolution society from within within till find the answers to its problem it might take days months weeks years but you know it happens slowly element of change is what make human beings you know fascinating what make them a matter of study so therefore in light of this you know when we see it's really insignificant like even if you you know can, can call the contributions of british i think i think we are at a very bad end of the bargain like a language will not do not undo you know sufferings of millions right and will not do anything to us you know we were suppressed you know, not just you know economically not just financially but you know even otherwise we were suppressed mentally we were suppressed spiritually we were suppressed religiously we were suppressed culturally So each and every aspect of what would you know what defines us in, as an Indian, you know, an effort was made by them to take take it away from us. Like you know, there was this saying that uh, probably some people might claim that the British took away this uh, superstitious belief in Indians back then that if you cross the seas uh, you will lose your caste or your or something like that. But the reason that happened, why they took the Indians away overseas, was not to break the superstitious belief, but rather to serve their own ends and their own interests. So it was an unintended consequence, is what I can see. They were never intended to create what they want to create. In that aspect, I, I highly disagree with people who think the colonial era would have brought anything to. It. Like for example. The, the Ottomans were never under the British. Let's just talk about that. They still, you know, have well-developed, you know, railways. So telling us railways or you know language or laws, I think it would have organically, you know, come to us. I, I don't think we needed 200 plus years of horrific imperialist colonial rule to get us those small things. You know, US got it. Right, US got it. So I think we would have also organically, you know, got it. You look at the impact of colonialism, or uh, you know, these female colonies like Australia or even America. Yeah, if you look at just the far-fetching impact of colonialism, how bad it was, and when you look at the all the struggle that went into you know throw out that dispel that colonialism from our country, I think that's what we should be celebrating the most when we celebrate uh, you know Independence Day. Not just that we are a democracy, or not just this, and obviously we are far from perfect. country like in the 74 years like we've made terrible mistakes we've you know done a lot of shitty stuff we you know had a lot of slip ups but again it's something that we have done ourselves there are also like great things that we have done uh, it's good for us to remember on you know this day that so many of the problems that have happened and how much we have to work towards better ourselves so i think that way it's a good idea to celebrate this day well said well said actually you know lastly i would ask uh, both of you as kids like uh, how have you evolved celebrating independence day in general like have you guys ever celebrated independence day you know by traditional means going uh, with the friends probably hosting a flag or something obviously like everybody school had that ceremony right you wake up early you go there uh, you basically do the whole flag hoisting ceremony you eat jalebis and you come home and because no school that was just to be like when you were a kid obviously that was the biggest trophy you Number one, you get free jalebis. Number two, no school. Like, what could be better than that? 
but also like now more than ever when independence day comes around it's more of a day of remembrance than anything i think the major difference uh, between me celebrating independence as a kid and now celebrating independence i think major thing is i think i stopped buying those flags you know, the spider piece plastic flags you'll get and even those pins those, those golden color pins where you had the indian flag or the indian map with the flag or something like that i, I stopped buying those that was because at the end of the day you, you just throw it out on the street i generally i've had bit for motherland i drop the practice and now those flags have come in the form of whatsapp statuses instagram stories facebook posts even with that chandan like he brings up a good point ki so much of independence day now has been trivialized to you know these small flags and pins and jalebis and you know these typical things that you do on independence day so i think now a better thing for somebody to do on independence day would be to just go through our history once like just watch a documentary on history td national probably has those playing all the time don't watch richard attenborough's gandhi it's not it's not a very accurate movie but yeah go read up on history go read up on some of the notable people and some of the not so notable people who lived through colonial times and you know read about their struggle try to you know connect with them try to humanize with them both on the indian and the british side and try to realize where all these things went wrong and you know hopefully we'll be able to you know educate ourselves to a place where uh, that kind of history doesn't repeat itself again that we won't have to celebrate another independence day from something hopefully as pushkar pointed out i think the biggest way we have we can celebrate independence day is in addition to knowing who we are you know where we came from what our ancestors did you know like i am sitting in the comforts of my house you know and i am talking at almost 11:30 almost midnight to someone far off what are the costs involved you know in this luxury that i am in so i think we need to you know evaluate the cost we need to understand uh, how did i come to this like how did my ancestors live right so when you go to that basic question as to how they lived to what happened what was the cost they had to incur right so there's no need of sympathy but at least empathy is what we need what is needed from our side along with empathy the most important thing is knowing history is not enough we need to know history so that we don't make the mistakes over and over again so when we when we stop making one mistake every independence day which our ancestors did i think that is a contribution to you know our ancestors you know sacrifices and struggles so like you know you look at japan in 1947 and you look at our nation in 1947 we were the largest fastest growing economy i think we were around 3% in 1947 the fastest growing economy in asia at the time we could have done better so we can't blame it on single individual or a single government or a single institution it has to come from within so japan turned it around they used different methods the responsibility on part of the populace also you know, to to know what their limits are to know what their confines are to know what their potential are and accordingly act and when you you know stop making one mistake every independence day which your ancestors did which cost them which delayed their independence i think that is a big 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 change big realization big difference you can create and and then you know probably you can achieve probably 5% of what's there in the constitution no i'm not telling that we've not achieved that we have achieved we've gotten millions out of poverty you know and and not through repressive means you know such as our neighboring country we did it through peaceful means we can do it and a lot of times when we thought that you know that this is done you know this is done we are gone I think we've come up again. For example, this COVID-19 episode. Everyone thought we were done, but then no. We stood up to the occasion. We rose to the occasion. You know, we have overcome challenges. We're not it's not perfect, but we are doing better. If you would have asked me, like, let's say even a year ago, was this possible? Sitting in the confines of my house and listening to classes, and you know, writing an online exam, would it be possible? I I would have definitely said no. I mean, do the dumb thing about it. But but right now, when you think of it, I think it's a it's a great change. and we have the potential you just have to tap it that is when you tap even 1% of your potential and stop making even one mistake which your ancestor did which delayed their independence i think that is the best way to celebrate our independence i think more nothing less one change at a time undoing one mistake at a time that is all it's a very slow process but it has you no know, effective results you know hashtag ready for cm <laughs> other i would like to Say that, please. They did this part out. Pushkar's dialogue. <laughs> no, no, but it was very well said. Basically, the whole crux of the episode, you know, boils down to this: that um, you know, we know some notable people, and we surely appreciate them. But we should also empathize with the others and the whole nation as a whole who went through this and realize how bad colonial era was, and try to rectify the mistakes one at a time. And I think uh, that's about it. 
and yeah what i was going to recommend is just um you know if you will try reading satyajit ray's books which take place during the colonial era try reading tagore try reading prenchand try reading uh, mulk rajahan try reading rk narayan all these people who wrote during the colonial era first of all they're amazing to read their wonderful books and they'll also help you understand and empathize with the people that lived at that time and it will help you kind of appreciate your fellow people and forgive your fellow people and also hopefully or be better than yourself so basically so let's say if your everyday talk is continues and let's say after 10 years again you invite me for a special episode with hope independent i hope that i don't have to repeat my words again what i just said make undoing a mistake once at a time I, so that that is the real you know fuck of this whole thing oh nice nice so i think that that is an important thing ending i just i just like to say i remember this quote a very had a profound effect on me it goes like this yesterday i was uh, clever i wanted to change the world today i am wise i want to change myself it's a quote by rumi if you don't know he's a persian poet islamic scholar theologian he was from iran he lived in 13th century yeah that's all i wanted to say you know that's such a beautiful quote that will end the episode on such a high note and thank you guys for coming in this episode it was really fun talking to you and i'll catch up with all of you again soon bye bye jai hind jai hind and wash your hands thank you to all the listeners i'll catch up with you again soon with someone new and lots of interesting discussions so bye